Welcome everyone to this uh, Privacy Espresso. Today I'm joined by Luca Egitto from the Italian law firm RP Legal and Tax to discuss uh, one of the trending topic of the moment. Uh, that is the one related to Google Analytics and the recent position of the Italian DPA on, uh, on it. So Luca, thank you very much for, for being with us. What's the position of, uh, of the Italian DPA? Thanks to you all for having me uh, for this Privacy Espresso. So um, this decision was longer waited for. It's the first of a, um, a series of four, because I, if I'm not mistaken, there are four complaints brought by NOYB. And um, the outcome of this was pretty much predetermined by uh, Schrems 2, EDPB, and uh, especially the, the Austrian DPA and the French DPA. So it's very unlikely that a, a DPA in this moment is going to follow a different route. So the underlying issue, which we all uh, are familiar with, is that using Google Analytics entails a transfer of personal data to the US and uh, that the guarantees from 44, 49 GDPR that are usually uh, involved and this, this time our SECs are deemed to be not sufficient to prevent um, the uh, an unconditional and very uh, uh, disproportionate access uh, from the US authorities to data stored or accessed from the US. So this problem, which was highlighted two years ago, and that basically struck down Privacy Shield, also applies uh, to SECs, apparently, and uh, to uh, Google Analytics. So the DPA, in the same manner as the Austrian one, acknowledged that the, the supplementary measures that were introduced by the, the data controller were not sufficient to uh, ensure that the, the protection of personal data in the transfer were adequate. And so for the moment, suspended this processing and gave 90 days to, to resolve the issue, which is, is, is like different from, from what happened in other DPAs. The reason uh, I think uh, is um, uh, the uh, approach of the DPA aimed at basically not distressing or disrupting uh, businesses because the, the DPA is fully aware of how deep uh, Google Analytics penetrated the businesses. And so it's, it's very hard for SMEs or especially small businesses to get rid of this in a short time. But this 90 days and basically the, um, the, the content of the decision gave hopes that maybe this period of time would be useful to you know, make a GA4 configuration suitable to meet the expectation of the DPA, which is unlikely in my view. So I think that this data controller is quite doomed as happened in France and Austria. Speaking about GA4 and you know, alternative yeah. solution, how to solve this problem? Because for the moment, it looks like the companies uh, will have to solve uh, the problem case by case. So yeah. which are the, the solution? Because for example, we know that the CNIL was proposing the usage of proxy. We have this GA4. Yeah. Is yeah. there a valuable solution? Uh, uh, in this context, you have multiple choices in theory, but then you need to adapt them to uh, the actual circumstances of processing. GA4 was thought to be a kind of solution because it introduced further privacy enhancing features in the last months and it, it was deployed early 2022. And in late April, Google basically explained how to implement and deploy GA4 in a manner which, according to them, was addressing the concerns of the DPAs. And maybe the idea that GA4 may work is that it was deployed much later than the complaints that are now dealt with by the DPAs. Uh, GA4, I think, has a default feature masking IP, can eliminate IP, allows you to turn off Google signals, which can track a lot of data and send them to the US, works with the consent mode, which is another privacy enhancing technology by Google. Uh, it can allow you to disconnect geolocation or other tracking data. So it, uh, it decreases dramatically the amount of data which can be transferred to the US. But my view, and I, I honestly didn't find any evidence to the contrary, is that the client ID still remains underneath and is transferred. So if only just this little piece of information is transferred, then the allegation by the DPAs, especially the Austrian one, is still there. So there is still a little piece of information that says nothing to you, nothing to me, but for Google, can be tracked back to a user. So if that applies again, then GA4 is doomed as well. Whereas proxy, in theory, is kind of a, an effective idea 
because it implies um, uh, circulating the information through a third party uh, channel, which basically blurs the information, which would be then in non-intelligible to Google. So in theory, it's kind of a good idea, but in practice, it's very cumbersome to pursue. The most famous proxy providers are US-based. So clearly, this is not a viable solution. You need to find a proxy in the EU. You need to find a proxy provider uh, which is compliant with GDPR. You need to make sure that it does not uh, add further information that can be used in the end. So in theory, it could be a good idea. In practice, it's a hell of, uh, of organizational or economic issues. So I don't rule out that somebody will pursue it, and in theory can, but it's not, let's say, a standard procedure that can be adopted at large. So in theory, the, 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 the most valuable solution would be GA4 to work. But I think this is still to be proven. Unless somebody convinced me to the contrary, client ID is still in the information and the objection that some people in marketing raised is that this client ID is not permanent, so it changes, but it's not, a, uh, it's not relevant because IP addresses are dynamic, they change, nevertheless, they are personal data. And that would apply to client ID as well. So either client ID is disallowed or blurred or made unaccessible to Google, or we still have a problem. And so we're still there. One of the positive things is the debate that came out, right? So I, I think that in the beginning, there were people desperate and so behaving blindly, you know, but refusing reality. But now people is being convinced that we are at the turning point. So there are people working on GA4, trying to take the most out of it. So we'll see whether all these remaining doubts will be removed or resolved. But at the moment, it's not. That's perfectly clear. Thanks a lot. And just one last question uh, for you. It's, at, let's say, at, at the higher level, so the, the yeah. uh, looking at the laws or position of this big tech, do you see any other solution, which is probably the solution that can, you know, yeah. uh, put a full stop <clears throat> on this debate? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, first, first thing to mention is Cloud Act. Uh, which is often neglected. Uh, Cloud Act is an uh, overranging uh, legislation that may allow uh, the, the US to require uh, any US entity to disclose data which is not in the US as long as this is controlled by the US entity. So a lot of people started arguing why Google is not segregating businesses so to avoid um, um, inquiries from, from the American government. Obviously, uh, an Irish, a fully Irish entity is not subject to the US jurisdiction. But it, the point is that Cloud Act, uh, if I'm not mistaken, would allow the US government or age, US governmental agencies to require uh, the American ultimate beneficiary to procure the subsidiary or the entity in, the, in Ireland, for example, to disclose data. So this is one major issue. The, the second issue is that there needs to be multiple changes to the American legislation, which is not very easy to pursue nowadays because there are some you know, other issues in the US uh, to be addressed in this moment. And uh, so for example, one thing is establishing a data protection authority in the US. That would help a lot because it, this is where you file complaints for data processing uh, uh, illegal actions. Uh, and the second thing would be some mitigation to this unlimited and unconditional uh, access that uh, authorities appear to have. That, that would be a, a viable solution. So trying to find an entity or a body that could receive complaints and try to you know, protect um, data subjects, and the second thing would try to limit this this power to access data, which to some people appear almost unlimited. So that would help a lot, but it, it's not going to happen before first quarter of 2023, uh, I suspect. Okay, so I think there is still a bit to wait, so it's it's good yeah. to to keep an eye and, and find you know alternative solution waiting for uh, for this and hoping for this to happen. But uh, we we end up of um, of our time, Lucas. So thanks a lot yeah. for for thanks being with us. Uh, yeah. Very interesting discussion, uh, and I would like thanks. to thank also uh, our listeners for being with us. And uh, I would thanks. like to invite them to be with us for the next Privacy Express. So thanks, okay. Lucas. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Luca. bye.